Hello, I'm your host Chris Bickham. The following studies are based upon hydrogen emission. You may ask yourself, what the fuck is hydrogen emission? No, it's not an inappropriate phenomenon. It's the appropriate phenomenon to study the early universe. You may have heard of this man. Yes, he formulated special and general relativity. He wrote a letter to the American president warning that the Nazis were working on an atomic bomb. However, that's not what he received the Nobel Prize for. It had previously been experimentally shown by Hertz that exposing ultraviolet light to a conductor more easily produced a spark across a gap. It was later shown that gases under ultraviolet radiation would re-emit light, but not the same kind of light. Einstein won the Nobel Prize for utilizing Planck's constant and resolving the mathematical debacle that was the ultraviolet catastrophe. Einstein theoretically explained the previous experiments showing that light interacts individual packets. Atoms don't absorb or emit light with just any old wavelength. They only absorb or emit photons that correspond to the exact changes in their energy level or their state. These discrete mathematical mappings of photon emissions were dubbed quanta. Yes, that's why it's called quantum mechanics. Inflation theory says that everything began at a point, and thereafter, the universe expanded. Hubble's constant, a value we've experimentally measured numerous times, describes how fast the universe is expanding, depending on its distance from us. If you trace all the stuff we see back, we come to a date around 14 billion years ago. It's theorized that this Big Bang produced radiation as well as particles with mass. It is believed that 300,000-ish years after this point, the Big Bang skeet skeet coalesced into atoms. These studies target a specific part of the spectrum. When a hydrogen atom drops from a hyperfine state, it releases energy. This is when the proton and electron of the atom have the same spin. After some time, a long fucking time, the electron spin will flip, changing the state. This emits a photon at 21 centimeters, the radio wave range. This brings us to the edges experiment. This study looked at the cosmic background radiation, the echoes from the Big Bang. This first ancient hydrogen gas eventually formed stars. When them bitches lit up, they emitted photons. This could have excited or changed the quantum state to one of higher energy, the gas that had not yet formed stars. This energy level, it is proposed, could have allowed the gas to absorb cosmic background radiation photons. The researchers were flabbergasted. The data did not match theoretical modeling of the situation. The temperature of the gas was significantly colder than theorized, or the radiation was hotter than theorized. Harvard Smarties have proposed a solution to this modern radiation catastrophe. In study, Munoz and Loeb proposed that if less than 1% of dark matter was electrically charged, the interaction with normal matter and by the electromagnetic force could have cooled the hydrogen, explaining this phenomenon. A previous study, utilizing the Very Large Telescope, studied galactic disks of distant galaxies. Redshift, in the cosmological context, is the change in wavelength dependent upon an object's velocity to or away from an observer. This velocity change is so significant that we gauge cosmic distance by the amount of redshift that occurs in their light, combined with the luminosity of certain supernova, which explode with specific energies occurring in the galaxy stars. Now if you weren't already boggled in the noggin, shit's about to get weird. When we look at these faraway galaxies, we're witnessing light that is literally from the past. I'm talking motherfucking make Methuselah look like a newborn. Long, long time ago, galaxies far, far away old. This study discovered the rotation of these faraway galaxies did not behave as closer modern galaxies do. They did not possess the same increased rotational velocities in the outer regions. This is the very dynamic that originally led to the conceptualization of dark matter. A man once said, something's rotten in Denmark. I'd say the very same, except by Denmark, I actually mean Copenhagen. That's a, that, that's a, that's a physics joke. President Trump has announced the creation of a space force. The internet is alive with comical interpretation and dank memes depicting the army of troops that shall emerge from the metaphorical woodwork. Now, let's get fucking real for a minute. The division between air and space is somewhat an arbitrary distinction. The atmosphere becomes less dense as the distance from Earth increases. 
We depend in every aspect of modern society on the integrity of communication and global positioning satellites. January 11th, 2007, China conducted a test of its anti-satellite capabilities. They succeeded, and I would add, spreading debris all over the fucking place. Low Earth orbit requires velocity of about 17 and a half thousand miles per hour. Even a screw with this velocity would, as the Wu-Tang Clan says, fuck your ass up. Don't get me wrong, Elon Musk is a motherfucking PIMP. The moon is a more chronologically relevant objective. The moon could be used for orbit after capture in the business of mining asteroids for precious metals, which by recent estimates may contain trillions of dollars worth of precious metals. I'm talking about position. Position is one of the most important aspects of any engagement. The moon's gravitational pull is significantly less than our own. It's easier to launch mass from the surface. Given sufficient energy production, mass could be launched from the moon to produce surgical kinetic strikes on the Earth. Depending on projectile mass, through kinetic energy alone, warheads would not be needed to produce significant energetic collisions. The Navy has already devised an electromagnetic gun. It is being developed by BAE, who recently denied my summer internship. All resources located higher up the gravitational well of Earth provide significant advantage in terms of both difficulty in striking the resource and kinetic energy available to the resource should it return to the Earth. Reagan's Star Wars ideas weren't feasible at the time due to the lack of miniaturization of many components that today are much more so. These were, regardless, solid concepts. It's not about aliens. It's about protecting our communication resources and the potential to dominate territory should conflict erupt. Dominate the land. Dominate the sky. If you dominate higher positions of Earth's gravitational well, the sky will fall.